Hey guys, welcome back to day eight of this Winter Wonderland series. Today we're gonna to be working on this rustic cabin tumbler tutorial. We're gonna implement a new technique as well as taking the rustic Highland cow tumbler and turning that into a birch effect. So I started out with a 24 ounce plump from the Tipsy Magnolia and I just spray painted the entire thing gold. You can use brown, whatever color you'd like. We're gonna tape off about two thirds of the way down because the top two thirds of it is going to be glittered. The bottom third of it is going to be foil. So we wanna keep those separated. So I'm gonna make up a mixture here. This is Franny, uh, Goddess, Denmark, and it's Pecan from Peachy Olive Glitters. I didn't measure, I just kind of added as I saw fit. I was trying to bring in the elements from the um, cabin decal that we're gonna be using. There's a little bit of like a burnt orange in there. There's some ivory, some gold, some brown. So just trying to emulate that into glitter form. And I'm going to use the tacket method for this again. Um, we're going to, as usual, apply this to the cup until there are no streaks, lumps, or bumps on this. And then we're going to hit that with a heat gun or let it air dry until that glue is completely clear. We're going to repeat that process twice. So I'm going to lay this glitter down, rub it into the tumbler. The first coat, you're not going to get the greatest coverage. So we're going to go back in right over top of that first coat of glitter with the same process. Just go in with the tacket method. I did not seal anything prior to applying the tacket glue. And then we're going to rub the glitter down again in that second layer, and then we'll seal it with some Crystalette glitter glue. After I applied that glitter glue, I went back and immediately pulled the painter's tape, let that air dry for a couple of hours, and then I'm going to use this little, it looks like an ice pick and a hammer to pop out that bottom so we can create a glitter booty. I'm gonna do that prior to applying the foils. And then I will preface this by saying, I think that my glue is not good. I got this from uh, TumblrCon from the Artistic Painting Studio booth and I'm pretty sure that it's not supposed to be thick like this. I had a really hard time applying it to the base of the cup, so I'm like 99% sure it's supposed to be thin and watery and it probably just went bad. So I would tread lightly if you have some expired glue, um, but I do think that it really helped to adhere the foil to the cup. And you can definitely see the paintbrush streaks in it through the foil but it actually gives it a really cool texture in the end and i love how it plays into the birch tree effect and it goes horizontally so it all worked out you can't tell that it's unintentional um, but just be cautious if you do have some expired glue that it will show through uh, the foil once it's applied so we're going to go in and i'm brushing this onto the tumbler and then we are going to 
in the same technique as the uh, tacket method we're going to hit that with the heat gun and make sure that the foil glue is completely clear before applying it if you're trying to apply foil to white glue it's just going to peel right off the foil is going to stick to that plastic backing that it comes on and it's not going to adhere to your cup so with this one, I made sure that while I was pressing it down, the foil was completely flat on the cup. If you get any crinkles or cracks or anything in your foil, it is going to show through on your design. So I wanted to make sure that everything was laid flat so we didn't have any missing pieces of foil. And then once I got that pressed down, I'm going to go in with the same, this is a denture toothbrush <laughs> I find the most ridiculous things to use so I'm gonna use my denture toothbrush that I used in my true crime blood splatter uh, tutorial and I'm going to use that to brush the foil onto the cup I've not removed it at this point so we're just basically pushing that into the glue once it's dry and it really helped to adhere the foil to the tumbler. I had one spot that was missing foil after this had been pulled up and that is not always the case. If you watch a lot of tutorials you'll see that a lot of the times the foil comes off really roughly. A lot of pieces are missing. A lot of people tend to use it on like a rustic type tutorial or tumbler um, because they can't get that good effect and they can't get the foil to fully grip to the tumbler. So this worked out pretty well. I don't know if it was a combination of the toothbrush and the expired glue or if it was just the toothbrush or just the glue. I don't know but it worked out really well. I'm really happy with the end result. So anyways, long story short, we're just gonna brush that on and pull that clear backing off once everything is adhered to the cup and then once the face of the tumbler is pulled off we're going to go into the bottom and get that bottom rim to finish that off for that glitter booty I took about 5 milliliters of that glitter mixture I used on top and mixed it in with about 10 milliliters of a UV resin of your choice and about 15 milliliters in total for the two. I mixed them together, placed that in the base of the tumbler making sure that nothing spilled over the edges into the foil section. We're going to torch that to pop any air bubbles and then I set that under the UV light. I would say probably three or four rounds of 99 seconds just to ensure that the all of the UV resin was completely cured. Once it was hard to the touch, I put my little acrylic logo tag on there from Mizzy's Doodles and I'm going to UV resin over that once it's adhered in place. And then once that is all taken care of, we're going to go in with some regular setting epoxy. After applying 20 milliliters of the Flynn Sisters Artist Cure Resin and letting that cure overnight, I taped off the bottom third of the tumbler so the foil was not exposed to this paint and glue uh, birch tree effect that we're going for. So once that was taped off, everything was pressed down. I'm going to mix in, I would say, probably about two-thirds of the ivory paint to probably about a third of the white paint to give it a light color. I didn't want it completely white. I wanted it to kind of play into all of the browns and tans that we had going on here. So I didn't want white. I thought that would be 
too stand out, too obvious that it didn't match very well, go with the rustic theme. So we're gonna apply the Elmer's glue just like we did in the Highland tutorial a couple of days ago. And in this tutorial, we are going for a birch effect, which is a horizontal line versus a vertical line, which we did in the Highland cow tutorial. And as I mentioned in that one, whichever way you want your paint to crackle, that is the way that you need to apply both your glue and your acrylic paint. So we're going horizontally on the cup here. This Elmer's glue, you don't have to be very cautious applying it, but you do need to be careful when you're applying this acrylic paint. And you guys will notice, I mentioned before, I try not to go over the paint lines that I apply on the cup more than once because it tends to muddle up that Elmer's glue into the acrylic paint and you don't get a great crackle effect. Um, and you'll, you'll see here where I went over it multiple times and you can tell before I kind of chip, chip the paint away um, where I went over that multiple times. So it's really hard to get just one streak on this horizontal version. It was a lot easier on the vertical version of this to do just one run through of the acrylic paint. So it's gonna happen. You're just gonna have to kind of work around it and make it so it's not so obvious that there are paintbrush lines. Like right here, you can see where the oval end of my paintbrush was in, so in the uh, paint. So I went back in and I kind of chipped that out with my popsicle stick. So it wasn't so obvious. We're just gonna do a rough draft of where I want the chips in this birch to be. And then we'll go in and Kind of make the chips bigger we'll pull the paint off and kind of give it that rustic look Once I got the effect I was going for, I went in with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol and some acetone in the really rough spots that had a lot of paint left over. I used acetone in the sections that were basically just needing a little bit of a cleanup. I used the rubbing alcohol just to make sure that we didn't put too much acetone on it and eat away too much of this acrylic paint, losing that birch tree effect. Once everything was cleaned up the way I wanted it, I'm gonna put that on my turner. I did not seal anything in. I'm just gonna put one more coat of the regular setting epoxy on it. You do not wanna go in with any of your decals at this point, even though it's a smooth surface. It has to be on a glossy surface, otherwise you're gonna be able to see the non-glossy paint underneath your sticker cal between uh, the clear kind of backing portion of that decal. Once that second coat of epoxy is fully cured, I'm going to go along the top with my Dremel tool to ensure that there is a thin line of stainless steel exposed at the top. That is just going to ensure that the final coat of epoxy has something to adhere to. It gets a good seal and the longevity of the tumbler is going to remain intact. And then as long as you've got the smooth glossy surface on the uh, birch effect section, you'll be able to go in with this element. This is from Gracefully Created. If you're watching this at the time it drops, November 25th, 2023, she is having a Black Friday sale right now in this 12 by 12 sheet um, of elements is about $5 at checkout. So I used a ton of those elements in my past tutorials the last 10 days. 
If you plan on recreating them, I would definitely go check those out. This is not an affiliate comment. This is just me saying they're on sale to save you guys some coins. So once that element was applied, I'm gonna go in with this textured gold metallic from Tech Wrap Craft, and this was cut at 0 0.09 by 11 and a half inches. I'm gonna wrap that between the birch effect and the foil. Put that on my turner with a coat of polycrylic to ensure that nothing lifts once the final coat of epoxy goes on. Once that polycrylic is dry, use about 20 milliliters of the Artist Cure Resin from Flynn Sisters. Let that cure overnight and after about 24 hours, this is good to go and dry to the touch. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. I love how this one turned out and I will see you guys tomorrow for day nine.